Hey there everybody, welcome back to another video and today I wanted to make a video for those new aspiring IGLs talking about the mistakes that I've made before because I feel like they're a very uh, teachable moments type things where you can learn from them so maybe you can avoid those mistakes while you're IGLing. So the first mistake that I made when I started out as an IGL was just having overcomplicated strats, right? So trying to say we need four smokes here, five smokes here, blah 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 blah, right? What you need to do is make your strat as simple as possible, yet as effective as possible. And if to be effective you need four smokes, then I mean that's how it has to be. But if there's some things where you're like, okay, this is a little bit of fluff, this isn't really uh, necessary, you know, it's kind of just slowing everybody down on the strat, then cut it out. Like, try the strat as bare bones as possible, and then add in the, you know, the flash here, the molly this, the fake that, right? Don't start out up here, start out down here. It honestly helps, not just you know, every time you add another piece of utility in there, that's another opportunity for one of your teammates to forget what they're supposed to throw or throw it incorrectly. Or if they die, it's like, oh, well, Jim all, always throws the flash, man. What do we do? Uh, so it, it eliminates that, but also it allows your teammates to try to memorize the strats a bit better and you have a deeper playbook, right? If every single strat that you have is super involved, it's super time consuming, it's difficult to run through all of them and have everybody remember everything that's going on while adding, you know, eight more, nine more strats on top of that. So just making sure that, you know, you're not overcomplicating things and everybody's on the same page. The second mistake that I made a decent amount was micromanaging people in game. You know, you don't have to do that. What you're supposed to do is during practice, during beforehand, when you're dry running stuff, you're in the offline server with the boys, right? That's when you want to say, hey, last match I saw you were doing this. Let's try to clean that up, right? I want everybody to make sure that, you know, they can take criticism, but not, not in game, right? When, when you're in the middle of a scrim, that's not the time to tell somebody they're doing something wrong. You write it down, you mention it later. Obvious, obviously, if it's a tiny little thing, right? You know, oh, you threw that flash wrong. You can tell them then. That's not a big deal. But if you're saying, hey, you're defaulting entirely, like, incorrectly, like, you're not doing what you're supposed to do at all, Keep that for after the game, right? Lose the scrim, whatever. It's a scrim for a reason, right? It's not a league match. League matches are a little bit different. If you see that the ship's sinking, maybe you want to take a pause and talk to everybody then. But in a scrim, right, you're supposed to be practicing. So just let everybody make those mistakes then. Write down what needs to be fixed. And then when you get into the offline, talk about what needs to be fixed. The third mistake that I kept making was getting players on the team because they had good stats, like wanting those high ADR players, high impact players, and not really caring if those players, you know, fit with the team, um, are available as much as the other teammates, right, are as dedicated as the other teammates. What you have to understand is that a, a 100 ADR player that's not dedicated and doesn't really show up on time and, you know, doesn't get the jokes that your teammates have, is no better than an 80 ADR player that understands all of that, shows up on time, you know, yeah, maybe they'll have more impact in-game, but getting to that point where they're going to have that impact in-game is going to take, take much longer than it would if you just take the player that's dedicated and ready to work. Obviously, there comes to a point where it doesn't matter how dedicated you are and how many, how many hours you put into the team and how much you help out with the strats and all that. If you just can't shoot back, you can't shoot back, right? So I'm not saying that every single shitter should be on your team. I'm just saying that sometimes you don't have to go for that star player, especially if you already have somebody like that on your team. You don't want toes to be stepped on. Maybe your star player because you picked up another one. It's not like two star players are going to be sick. Maybe, you know, one of them doesn't perform as well since they now have clashing egos or something like that. For example, FaZe for the last like three years, right? They have all these superstars, but they're not just like completely winning every tournament, right? They're still going out in groups and maybe even playoffs. The fourth thing that I did wrong probably for the longest amount of time was underestimate the amount of practice that you actually need to be a successful CSGO team. 
right, you know, practicing two to three times a week isn't going to cut it if you're trying to compete at higher levels. You need to practice three, four, five times a week to be able to compete with other teams. Because the thing is, other teams aren't practicing, you know, two times a week. They're practicing that five times, six times a week, right? So to be able to compete, to be able to be at the top, you need to just drill in those practices, get everything down, try to get your map pool even. But the biggest thing is just making sure that everybody knows what's going on, getting everybody onto the same page. And finally, the fifth thing that I did wrong as an IGL while I was moving up through the ranks and all that was I was too easily like ready to get rid of a person, right? If if they weren't shooting back enough or they were they weren't like meshing the way that I wanted them to, or they didn't really, you know, go out when I wanted them to, I would just go, you know what, I don't really want to play with this player. There's there's bigger fish on the market, you know, there's the 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 pond is full of different players, right? And so I just get rid of them, and I try to bring somebody else in. And the person that I'd bring in probably would, you know, as I mentioned before, have higher ADR, but be less dedicated. And what you need to figure out is that sticking with the same five, or at least the same core of three to four players, and then bringing in a player every once in a while is going to be very helpful for your team, for your IGL style, for you growing as an IGL as well, being able to have a baseline and not have to reteach everybody everything every single season. Just being able to have that foundation to grow off of, and then you can take suggestions. And finally, when you find that right player, you know, because you already have the core of four or three, you know, it just takes a second or two to teach them what's going on. And if they have a question about, you know, hey, what do I do on this default? Everybody around you can answer that question because they've all played with you for so long that it's no longer like, oh, I don't know, ask the IGL. It's like, oh, I've, I, you know, somebody asked this question two months ago. I know exactly what the answer is. So that's all I have for today's video. If you have any questions regarding IGLing, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you want me to review your team's demo, I also do that along with reviewing your personal demo. So click the join button on the channel page and all those options will be available to you. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good day. Check out my Twitch. Uh, I've been streaming just about every night. The night that this video is being posted, I'm posting this on Friday, not going to be streaming that night. But every other night I'm streaming, okay? So I'm streaming like team practices. Come check it out. Come ask questions. Come hang out. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a good day, and I will see you all next time.